Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today I want to talk about the Akatika GT102 Z4 two-channel amplifier. It is a really interesting product and it's a kit. So sit down, get comfortable, and let's talk about it. Well, the Akatika GT102 Z4 is actually the 4-ohm version of this amplifier. They do have an 8-ohm version. Its power output is 50 watts into 8 ohms and 80 watts into 4 ohms, so not bad at all. It is a Class AB amplifier, even though when we look inside, you'll see some chips, and we'll talk about that when I get to it. Um, but it is actually a stout little amplifier. It's got a nice modular design, and again, we're going to look inside and see that, and hopefully you'll get an idea, a better idea of how it works. And if you like the video, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscription. Also, too, if you wish, there is a link in the description if you want to join the channel. And at the bottom of the video, there is a thank you button. If you want to buy me a granola bar, I'd greatly appreciate it. So let's take a look inside. Here we are looking at the inside of the Akatika GT102 Z4 amplifier. And we're going to start over on this side, which is the power supply side. So AC comes in here, power switch there. This is your power supply, your big toroidal transformer. Each of these is a 10,000 microfarad capacitor. So very good power reserve, especially for a 50 watt into 8 ohm amplifier. This aluminum piece here is a shield that prevents any radiated noise from the power supply to actually get into the input and output sections of the amplifier. One other neat thing it has is this little circuit here, which is a ground lift. So in an amplifier, you can get what are called ground loops or ground hum, you'll hear it. Um, and it can be really distracting, but also too, there can be grounding related noise that increases the overall noise floor of the amplifier. And again, the higher the noise floor, the more it masks the fine detail in music, that sense of air, those fine little details and nuances that we like to listen for. So this helps eliminate that. I think it's a great idea. As you can see, each side of the amplifier is basically dual mono. You've got input side and output side on a single board. And again, they're separated, so no crosstalk issues. These are the output devices right here. It's a Texas Instruments, and it's called a chip-based amplifier. But really what it is, is think of it this way. There are two power transistors inside one case. So you've got a push-pull configuration. The chips are obviously a little less expensive than bigger power transistors. They're also you know, less heat, uh, less power consumption, things like that. And for a kit, it's perfect. The only drawback to chip amplifiers is sometimes they don't produce a ton of current just because of their limitations in size of the transistors that are in that single package. So anyway, that's the inside of the GT102. If you were to build this as a kit, it doesn't look intimidating at all. Obviously, you're going to need to know how to solder, but it's very doable and it's very interesting. And I think a really well laid out, well engineered design. So anyway, we're going to close it back up and we're going to go talk about how it sounds. Well, as you can see, it's a really well laid out unit. Nice big toroidal power supply, nice 10,000 microfarad caps on the power supply and on each amp board and the modular design. It's really a compelling product, especially as a kit you could build maybe with one of your kids or something like that, or even for your own enjoyment. So again, I think it's a, a compelling product at that price. Uh, I think it's really, really interesting. So how did I get on with it? Well, I got on it with really well. I hooked it up a zillion different ways. So I used my Evo 150 as a preamp. I used an uh, AudioLab MDAC as a preamp. I used a Sparkos Audio Gemini headphone amp preamp as a preamp. I fed it sources from the MDAC with a Cambridge MXN, MXN10 acting as a transport. I also fed it signals through the Sparkos from the line out of the system so that the Sparkos could act as its volume control. And I could feed it from my Bifrost. I could feed it from the little r r DAC that I have in. I could feed it from the Eversolo DMPA6 that I still am hanging on to. So I fed it a lot of different sources and played a lot of different stuff through it. And I found the amp to be very pleasant. And maybe that's the best word. It's pleasant and relatively forgiving. So I had it hooked up to the big Wharfdales. I had it hooked up to the uh, ELAC DBR62s. I had it hooked up to a pair of Wharfdale 225s that are visiting, and I had it hooked up to the Monitor Audio Silver 100. So I gave it a good workout, a variety of different loads, a variety of different speaker sound signatures, and it actually performed very well in all of them. So in the low end, it doesn't have a lot of bass. There's not a lot of drive to the bass. There's bass, but it's just 
I don't know, there's not a lot of punch to it. And it may be a part of that design with those uh, chip amplifier, discrete amplifier outputs. And it's not a class D, it is a class AB. But so bass was a little bit, it was satisfying, but not bad, just not punchy. Mid, mid bass was pretty good, but again, a little lack of punch or a little lack of kind of drive to it. The mid range was sweet as could be, very nice and detailed, very forgiving, no sibilance at all on female vocals or cymbals or anything like that. Just kind of smooth and warm and, and very pleasant. So if you listen to acoustic music, maybe acoustic jazz combos, things like that, you know, chord, string quartets. And I did, I listened to some, the Caudalet String Quartet, and I'll put a link, I'll put a picture of their album up here. Really, really good for Haydn string quartets. Anyway, that sounded very, very good in that. Now, as we moved into the upper mid-range again, sweet, nice detail. As we got into the treble, the treble was good and smooth, but not real extended. There wasn't a lot of air. There wasn't a lot of kind of detail up that high, uh, but again, very pleasant. So it was not a fatiguing listen at all. As far as imaging goes, it did a really good job between the speakers. It did a decent job with height. Um, not super deep, but very, very, again, very pleasant. And again, listening to something like a string quartet, that, that's a, a close ensemble. They're not very far apart from one another. So it sounded very natural with those. So I, I was really pleased with the sound. It, it exceeded my expectations for quote unquote a kit amp. So it was really, really nice. It's a, it's a neat product. And if you got kids or you want to do it yourself, it would be a great family project with, you know, with your kids or just to do it yourself and save some money. At $434, I think it's a good value. I really do. Um, it, it is, listen, it sounds every bit as good or better than any AVR receiver costing upwards of seven, dollars $800 without any question. Um, and you have the flexibility of, you know, using a DAC preamp or getting a separate preamp, which Akatika makes supposedly a really good preamp. I've not had any experience with it, but it looks very compelling on the website and on paper. And I've talked to people that have used it and said it's quite good. So you could do a kit and have a really nice stack for, for under a thousand bucks, well under a thousand bucks. You just got to build it yourself. So anyway, the Akatika GT102 Z4. Hopefully you liked the video. And if you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. I would also very much appreciate your comment. Um, please, everybody who comments on my videos knows I read them all, I react to them all, I respond to them all. If you got a question, I try to answer it. If I don't have the answer, I try to point you in the right direction to get that answer. So that's very important. Um, I did ask everybody to share some playlists. I would appreciate it if you continued to do that, especially my overseas viewers. I'd love to hear what you're listening to. And again, if you'd like to join the channel, there's a link to the membership in the description. And again, a thanks button if you want to buy me a granola bar at the bottom of the video. Also in the description of the video are some affiliate play li uh, affiliate links, sorry, and playlists down at the bottom. If you're interested in um, what I use to evaluate, there is a couple of evaluation playlists in there as well. So anyway, that's that. Thank you so very much. I'm grateful for the time you give me. I'm so grateful for you guys. As a matter of fact, when I'm filming this video, we just hit 4,000 subscribers. So I just, I'm so proud and so pleased. I just, it's amazing. And I'm very humbled by your support. I really am grateful. So anyway, this is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel saying, now it's time for you to go listen to some music, maybe on your home-built amp kit. Thanks so very much.